Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the United States Navy Memorial. I, Keshana, Chief Keshana Buchanan, and Chief Michelle Chester will be your master of ceremonies for today's event. On April 1st, 1893, the Grado Chief Petty Officer was established. 131 years, Chief Petty Officers have been resolute, resilient, and always ready. Today, we take the opportunity to honor those who are current and those who have gone before us. During the Parade of the Colors, all non-uniformed veterans and others are requested to place their hands on their, the right hands on their heart. Our host for today's ceremony is Rear Admiral Frank Thorpe IV, United States Navy retired, President and Chief Executive Officer, United States Navy Memorial Foundation. A company Rear Admiral Frank Thorpe is Mick Pond James Hurt, USN retired. Guests, please rise for the arrival of the official party, the presentation of colors, and the national anthem and invocation. Advance the colors. Hand salute. Ready to retire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Peter Dietz will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, you have been the anchor and shield of the Chief Petty Officers of the United States Navy for 131 years. You have been with them as they provide and maintain the stability and security of ships, stations, aircraft, and support to our sailors. Like an anchor's chain, they are the strength and the link that holds the Navy together. They are the link of communication between officers enlisted. They are flexible, experts in their fields, and ingenious, providing the direction, speed, and ability to accomplish diverse mission demands of our Navy. Lord, we ask you that you continue to bless these leaders, the Navy's anchors, the Navy chief petty officers. May they always look to you for guidance, be sustained by your spirit, and remain compassionate with your grace. Bless also their families who sacrifice much to support them and their mission to serve, lead, and teach. 
May this ceremony be blessed by your spirit as they are the pride of the United States Navy. Amen. Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our host, Rear Admiral Frank Thorpe, President and Chief Executive Officer, U.S. Navy Memorial Foundation. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the United States Navy Memorial. It, uh, it's a great day here for us today uh, for numerous reasons that, that uh, just warms my heart. To be honest with you, this is uh, kind of the first uh, official event we've had in the theater and looking out at a bunch of chiefs and master chiefs, senior chiefs is pretty awesome. Uh, McPon Bushy, McPon Hagen, McPon Giordano, McPon Hurt, uh, you honor us today by being here, by, by making the drive or the flight um, and being here, uh, it's a personal honor for me uh, to have you all here. Uh, Mass Chief Carbone, uh, it is, it is just, it, I'm a little overwhelmed to be honest with you standing here um, uh, uh, for numerous reasons, uh, but, but the biggest one I guess is, is uh, you all are here and it's, it's the, uh, the Chief's birthday and we're, we're going to see the the, uh, the new exhibits here, and now that we're inside, uh, I've got to point out uh, this, this wall. Several of you said to me, hey, what is that thing? What happened to the screen? Um, uh, the United States Navy Memorial now is the, uh, the first theater in the nation's capital to have an LED wall like this. We are, uh, we, we try to be a little humble, um, but we are now the best theater in Washington, D.C. Um, uh, there are 9,123,840 pixels in this wall. Um, so we're going to do a, a screening here in a couple weeks uh, for a new movie that's coming out about uh, the, the birth of special forces. Um, and we've asked to, to focus it, uh, the audience, uh, to be able to invite sailors. And so hopefully a lot of you all will be able to be here. But there's 880 of these panels. Um, that are here, and it's just, it's magic to see it. It's, think about the best TV you can see in Best Buy um, times uh, 17 feet by 32 feet. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so back to, uh, to the event. Um, today is, is, a, is a big day for us. Uh, as, we as we cut the ribbon here, we're going to, uh, basically it's a culmination of a vision that started some 12 years ago. Um, uh, and it's a, it's a big celebration uh, for your all's birthday. The Navy Band is here. It's never complete at the Navy Memorial without the Navy Band. Thank you very much up there. Thank you. Uh, the Color Guard, those four sailors that, that uh, carry our nation's colors, um, they always kind of remind me of what's important um, and where the future lies. Um, Commander Dietz, Chaplain Dietz, thank you very much uh, for your invocation. As always, you, you set the right tone uh, for day, today's event, so thank you very, very much. So happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday to the United States Navy Chief, uh, the most unique role and leadership responsibility of any organization or any company in the world. You know, the mission here at the Navy Memorial is to honor, recognize, and celebrate the men and women of the sea services, past, present, and future, and to inform the public about their service. And in doing that mission, today is a big day for us. Um, seven years ago, we cut the ribbon uh, for the Delbert D. Black National Chiefs Mess. Um, IMA was here, and it was a day that many of us will never, ever forget um, as we did that. We've navigated some shoals since then. A little pandemic uh, took us off course for a couple years. Um, finding the right person to, uh, to lead the mess, uh, that was quite the effort to find the right master chief. Uh, that could come in and, and, uh, and take this vision and make it a reality. And we found him, and uh, he just went over his two-year anniversary here, and you're going to see the fruits of his labors today. Um, as well as today, the online portal uh, com comes alive. And I know Mick Pond Hurt's going to say a little bit more about this, uh, but I just wanted to, to point out uh, what's special, 
something special about this day. Ladies and gentlemen, in this country, we have memorials to the different branches of our services. We have memorials because we honor, we honor those people who raise their right hand and take an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, to support and defend an idea, a piece of paper. Our Navy Memorial, our memorial, is prominently located right here, halfway between the two centers of our nation's government. With the Supreme Court and the nation's capital about eight blocks that way, exactly eight blocks that way, and the White House and the Commander-in-Chief eight blocks the other way. And now, at the United States Navy Memorial, I am so honored to partner with Master Chief Vic Smith, who is leading this effort to create the National Chief's Mess of the future. I have to put in a plug for him. He is, quite simply, awesome. He made today happen. At the Navy Memorial, we, we will now appropriately honor the most unique role in our nation, uh, in the world, really, the Navy Chief. How awesome is it that right here in our nation's capital, prominently positioned, we honor those who are entrusted. We honor you all who are entrusted to lead our young men and women as they take the strength of our nation around the world and defend our way of life. As you can tell, I get a little emotional about this. I am so indebted to the Navy chiefs with whom I have served. All leaders, all leaders should be indebted to the chiefs with whom they served. And the nation is indebted, the nation is indebted to you. To you for your service, your leadership, your honor, your courage, and your commitment. So thank you. Thank you for being the leaders that the Navy needs, that the Navy needs today, and we need you now more than ever. So happy birthday, and thank you. Thank you with all of my heart. Thank you, Rear Admiral. It is now my great honor at this time to introduce our guest speaker for today's event, the ninth Mass Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, James Hurt. Well, good morning. It's a splendid day. It's a great day to be here in the nation's capital and even better to be here with all of you for a guy that's uh, located down just south of Birmingham, Alabama. This, I had so many things I wanted to say today. I hope you'll forgive me. I put them down in words. So I'm going to be uh, referring to my, uh, my speech, written speech today, rather than just trying to wing it. Uh, so if you uh, don't mind, I'll, I'll just lead with that. Thank you for this tremendous opportunity to celebrate with all of you on this 131st birthday of what is arguably the most unique and effective rank in all of our services. It's also very appropriate that we're celebrating it here, here at the United States Navy Memorial. It's appropriate because the leadership of the United States Navy Memorial Foundation has taken the bold steps to make the Navy Memorial the epicenter of recognizing the important role Chief Petty Officers play in the world's greatest Navy. More on that later. It's hard to believe we're 131 years old. We're celebrating, we were celebrating birthday number 82 when they pinned my anchors on. And we celebrated birthday number 100 when I was the Command Master Chief on Theodore Roosevelt. Not too sure what that tells you other than I've gotten pretty old. <laughs> However, with Mick Pons Hagen and Bushy here, I'm not the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mick Pond, Bushy always calls me boot camp. When I think about our birthday, I try to imagine just what was it in our Navy at the time that caused someone in leadership to say, you know what, I think we should establish a new enlisted rank. What was it that moved them to put a rank into the organization situated between the ranks of the wardroom and the crew's mess? My cynical nature leads me to think maybe it was just to put some distance between the wardroom and what was a pretty rough-edged and mostly uneducated enlisted workforce. In other words, an individual they could turn to, uh, they could turn to to direct 
the work of the division, and to control and manage the day-to-day -day routine of the enlisted force. Regardless of the reasoning, I can't believe they could have ever imagined what they began would ever evolve into the CPO mess that we have today. The changes to the CPO and the CPO mess from 1893 to 2000, or, uh, 2024 have been neither quick nor largely strategically planned. It has been evolutionary, uh, an evolutionary journey and not necessary, necessarily revolutionary. It is one that began with a rank and insignia. Then it was a different uniform. Then it was a bestowment of certain privileges not available to lower ranks, such as a separate place to eat and sleep, the ability to have civilian clothes aboard ship. Each of these actions served as an important signal to others that chiefs carried different responsibilities and duties. This was important because, unlike commissioned officers, chiefs had no more legal authority to accomplish those responsibilities and duties than any other enlisted rank under the attendance of Rocks and Shoals and now the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Their authority came solely from the, their position in the command as a chief petty officer. The same is true even to today. At some point, CPOs began to understand their unique position and started actions to build their heritage and to standardize the expectations of those in the ranks. They built a CPO creed, announcing the uniqueness of their rank and what was expected of those wearing anchors. They began celebratory events to prepare new selects to join the ranks of CPOs. Both have, over sometimes bumpy journey, evolved into a season each year that both challenges and prepares those selected for advancement to the rank of Chief Petty Officer to join the existing team of CPOs in their commands Chief's Mess and to do a creditable job as a chief from their first day in khakis. By 1958, the role of E7, uh, the rank of E7 in all the services had grown substantially. It, so substantially, in fact, that Congress established two additional pay grades, E8 and E9 senior chief and master chief in the Navy. This brought a different structure into the chief's mess, along with greater responsibilities and higher expectations of performance and leadership. In 1967, the office of the master chief petty officer of the Navy was established when our first MCPON, Del Black, took the office. A few years later, the command senior enlisted leader program, now the command master chief program, was established. I think few at the time understood the role each of these actions would play in linking and standardizing the responsibilities, expectations, and behaviors of chiefs by linking every chief's mess to every other chief's mess throughout the entire Navy. The advent of the digital age has virtually networked the entire CPO community to every chief across the globe. The MCPON is able, if necessary, to communicate to every CPO in the Navy nearly instantaneously. Additionally, there is a hierarchy of senior enlisted leaders that provides communication flow from the deck plates to the MCPON and provides critical thought and input to all policies affecting sailors throughout the entire Navy. Regardless of just what it was that caused the leadership of the Navy in 1893 to establish the rank of chief, never could they have ever imagined what it would become. I'm sure what they expected of chiefs in those days would pale by comparison to what those expectations are today. There is just no way they could have possibly seen the role chiefs play in not only executing the journeyman level responsibilities of their rating, but also the leadership and leadership development roles they execute in accomplishing the mission of the command and in development and in the development of junior enlisted and officer sailors. It's often said our Navy is a tribe of tribes, tribes being the different communities, fleet areas, jobs, etc. That being the case, it's sometimes difficult to get all tribes to dance to the same drumbeat. There is one tribe, however, that has a foot in every other tribe across the Navy. And they all dance to the same drumbeat. It is the Chief Petty Officer Tribe. They are a tribe united by a creed common to all of them.
They are networked from every command in the Navy all the way to the MCPON, who has the ear of the CNO, the Secretary, and even Congress. So I believe the Chief's Mess is singularly the most powerful personnel segment across our entire Navy, with the greatest capacity to affect anything in the Navy they set their mind to affecting. I often tell CPO messes they can have the Navy they want if they can only decide on what it is they want. I have never heard of any flag officer or commanding officer ever saying, you chiefs are trying to take on too much. Maybe not every tribe in our Navy dances to the same drumbeat, but it is the CPO messes across the Navy that at least has us all dancing on the same dance floor. Yes, CPOs are much different than what they were. The growth path has been long, and as I said, sometimes bumpy. But the CPO rank today is a sought-after goal by the career enlisted sailor and is more powerful and professional than ever before. Now, on to why it's appropriate to be celebrating our birthday here at the Navy Memorial today. As you heard Admiral Thorpe say, we will be conducting a ribbon cutting ceremony to officially launch membership in the Delbert D. Black National Chiefs Mess immediately after this event. And you're all invited, so please stay around. I've been honored to represent all of you as a member of the Navy Memorial Foundation Board for the past nearly 20 years. Over that, over that period, our board has come to recognize the true uniqueness and, importance, uh, and the importance the role Chief Petty Officers play in the success of our Navy. Mick Ponhagen often expressed to me his belief that chiefs are the keepers of the Navy's history and heritage. That belief has had deep effect on me over these years. So much so that in fact I believe that if those words be true, then what better place for the heart of the CPO mess to reside than the United States Navy Memorial where it is a large part of our purpose here to honor and celebrate that history and heritage. As an outgrowth of a program we put in place in 2012 called the Year of the Chief, we invited CPOs throughout the, uh, throughout the Navy to participate with us to honor chiefs across our, our entire Navy. The response was overwhelming. It drove home just how special and united chiefs are. One of the things that has bothered me for some time is, as united and proud as we are to be chiefs, when we take our uniform off for the last time at retirement, that is usually the last we are actively a part of a mess or really engaged with the Navy, with our Navy, and able to understand the course changes that that Navy takes from time to time. This often results in unjust criticism by retirees who've lost contact with what the Navy is doing. It is also a loss for the Navy of a very key and vital asset useful in representing and telling the Navy story throughout our country. We think that's a tragedy. Our board decided we would launch upon a huge effort to provide a CPO mess open to everyone wearing or who have worn anchors. In doing, in doing so, we thought it appropriate to name it after our first McPon, McPon Del Black, a mentor to McPon Bushy and McPon Hagen and I, for sure. The physical location uh, the Delbert D. Black National Chiefs Mess is comprised of two parts. The physical part is located here at the Navy Memorial uh, Visitor Center. We've taken a large part of the center and converted it to a room of interactive touch screens and displays designed to honor, recognize, and celebrate those who served as Chief Petty Officers. And you will see that uh, after the ceremony here. We also wanted the Delbert D. Black National Chiefs Mess to be not just a physical place you had to come to D.C. to see and experience, but also a place every CPO could virtually hang their cover and coffee cup just as they do or did in CPO messes throughout the Navy. This took some time to develop and didn't become a reality until, as uh, Admiral Thorpe said, Command Master Chief Vic Smith came aboard. He then brought Command Master Chief Linda Atwood and Ms. Uh, Emily uh, o, o on board to help him. Under his direction, he, Glenda, and Emily developed and populated the online portal we hope every CPO will be part of and use. With the launch of our mess, uh, of our mess membership today, 
we're inviting every chief who has ever worn anchors on their collar to join. By going to www.navymemorial.org slash chief dash membership, you will find a button that will open membership application. You will also be able to join off of one of the screens in the, in the National Chiefs Mess today. Just like every CPO mess in the Navy, there are dues necessary to support the mess. The good news is the first year for everyone is free, regardless of when you join. The first year will be absolutely free. After that, the membership renews at a very minimal charge of $35 a year. During this first year of membership launch, there's also the opportunity to be recognized after joining as a member to go on the plank owners list. This, and the, for $100, your name goes on the plank owners list. It will be displayed uh, in the National Chiefs Mess, and you'll receive a serialized four-inch bo uh, box commemorative coin. Chiefs dream big, and this is no exception. It is my hope and the hope of the United States Navy Memorial Foundation Board that the Delbert D. Black National Chiefs Mess becomes another linchpin binding all chief petty officers together and also becomes the place for all CPOs, active and retired, to remain connected, uh, to remain connected to and belonging to our Navy. It is my hope and wish joining the Delbert D. Black National Chiefs Mess becomes as automatic for each year's CPO selectees as receiving their CPO charge book. Yes, we've come a long way from 1893, all the way from establishing a new rank and probably having fairly minimal expectations of what uh, it would provide to the Navy, to where we are today. Today, it would be hard to imagine a Navy without chief petty officers. We have become essential to virtually every aspect of its operation. We have built our heritage and traditions. We have set our standards. We have built an enterprise-wide network of communication and governance. And now, we have found a way to network and stay connected together for life. It is often said, Chiefs run the Navy. That's a well-meant, although somewhat patronizing statement. It's well meant to express the immense contribution of chiefs to the Navy. However, I believe it's much more accurate to say chiefs make the Navy run. It is the CPOs throughout the Navy who develop or help develop the plans the Navy uses every day to operate. It is the, it is the st uh, strategic plans, the maintenance plans, the training plans, the plans of the day the Navy uses every day. Once the plans are complete, they're handed to the chief to execute. It is, the Navy, it is the chiefs of the Navy who truly make the Navy run. Without chiefs, it doesn't operate. It just doesn't work. So in conclusion, let me say happy birthday, goats. Let's have another 131 years. Navy chief. Navy pride. Navy chief. Navy pride. Navy chief. Navy pride. Hoo ya. Thank you, McPon, for those words. Up next, Chief Glenn Slaughter will now read the Chief Petty Officer Creed. Will all chiefs please stand, past and present, for the Chief Petty Officer's Creed. During the course of initiation, you have been caused to humbly accept challenge and face adversity. This you have accomplished with rare good grace, pointless as some of these challenges may have seemed, they were valid. Time-honored reasons behind each pointed bar. Your faith in the fellowship of Chief Petty Officers was necessary to overcome these hurdles. The goal was to instill in you that trust is inherent with the donning of the uniform of a chief. Our intent was to impress upon you that challenge is good, a great and necessary reality which cannot mar you, which in fact strengthens you. In your future as a chief petty officer, you will be forced to endure adversity far beyond what has thus far been imposed upon you. You must face each challenge and adversity with the same dignity and good grace you have already demonstrated. By experience, by performance, 
and by testing, you have been advanced the Chief Petty Officer in the United States Navy. And only in the United States Navy, the rank of E7 carries with it unique responsibilities and privileges you are expected to fulfill and bound to observe. Your entire way of life is changed. More will be expected of you, more will be demanded of you. Not because you are an E7, but because you are now a Chief Petty Officer. You have not merely been promoted a pay grade, you have joined an exclusive fellowship. As in all fellowships, you have a special responsibility to your comrades. Even as they have a special responsibility to you. This is why we in the United States Navy may maintain with pride our feelings of accomplishment once we have attained the position of Chief Petty Officer. Your responsibilities and privileges do not appear in print. They have no official standing. They cannot be referred to by name, number, nor file. They have existed for over 100 years because chiefs before you have freely accepted responsibility beyond the call of printed assignment. Their actions and their performance demanded the respect of their seniors as well as their juniors. It is required that you be the fountain of wisdom, the ambassador of goodwill, the authority and personal relations, as well as technical applications. Ask the chief is a household phrase in and out of the Navy. You are the chief, the exalted position you have achieved, and the word exalted is used advisedly, exists because of the service, character, and performance of the chiefs before you. It shall exist only as long as you and your fellow chiefs maintain these standards. It is with our intention that you never forget this day. It is with our intention to test you, to try you, and to accept you. Your performance has assured us that you will wear the hat with the same pride as your comrades in arms before you. We take a deep and sincere pleasure in clasping your hand and accepting you as a Chief Petty Officer in the United States Navy. Navy Chief! Navy Pride! Navy Chief! Navy Pride! Navy Chief! Navy Pride! Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Chief Slaughter. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander P Peter Dietz will now deliver the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you are the source, sustainer, and purpose of life. You have given us responsibility not only for our own lives, but also for the well-being of our neighbor. Today, we honor that responsibility in the context of military leadership, honoring our Navy Chief Petty Officers. May all of our leaders always rely on you for wisdom and discernment, so each person under their care is inspired to use their particular gifts for the greater good. Let us all go forth assured of your presence, confident of your love, and obedient to your command. In your grace and mercy we pray. Happy birthday, Navy Chiefs. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commander Dietz. This concludes the formal portion of the ceremony. Thank you again, Rear Admiral Thorpe, for having us today. Again, this concludes the ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in place until the official party has departed. After the official party has departed, we are welcoming you down front to get a photo for the National Chiefs Mess. And then at the end of the ceremony, please join us for a cake cutting ceremony inside the Navy Memorial Visitor Center in the Dilbert Black Memorial National Chief Mess. Hoo-ah, Navy Chiefs. Yeah.